Good evening and hello. I hope you're all doing well today. Um, this live lettering tutorial will later be converted into a video that you can watch anytime if you don't have a bag ready to join me today. So maybe it's not evening, so I'll just say good day and good afternoon and all of that. Um, first of all, let's jump right into it and take a look at what sort of supplies we need for our lettering event today. So you can pick up the template at this QR code, which was in the event. And I've actually printed mine a little larger than is on the printout there. So you can always um, make it a little larger and that way it will fit whatever surface you'd like to put it on. If you want to put it on like a small uh, pencil case or something, then that's also possible and uh, it should be a good size for that as is. So I got this new echo bag at the uh, Joint International Conference last weekend that I went to in Seoul. Before that, I was going to put it on this bag here, which I, I don't know, I seem to have like a lot of echo bags around. So I don't know if you, if you know me, then uh, let me know if you need one. I might have like an extra or two, I don't know. I think my son came home with one yesterday too. Anyways, our materials that we're going to use, I'm going to do it on the back of this bag today. And the template and you're going to need a piece of chalk. Now, I have sharpened mine in your standard uh, large, if you have a pencil sharpener with a large hole and a small hole for your regular pencils, then um, you can sharpen your chalk with it as well. So you only need one color, preferably not white. I think I might use the red one or pink or whatever you wanna call it. And I'll be using these Zig Fabric Color brush pens. They're permanent brush pens and they've got a bullet tip on one end and a brush tip on the other end. And as I understand it, if you iron the design once you've finished it, then it will be permanent. Yes, permanent on fabrics after ironing. There are a lot of bullet tip fabric pens out there and honestly I think I'll probably be using the bullet tip edge of it more because it gives a more solid color so if you don't have the brush tip then don't worry about it whatever you can pick up at the stores will be great so I'm going to use it as I did it originally with this design here with the pink for celebrate purple for victories and then the small I'm going to do a mono line with a black in the middle. So um, what I've done, uh, this was what I did with original brush tip pens on paper, but then when I was converting it into this template for you, I actually cleaned up some of the transitions a little, made them a little neater, stretched things around nicely, and we are going to start with that right now. So if you have your template handy, then turn it over and you can kind of see where it is here already, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the template kind of backwards because I don't want to be smearing it with my hand. So um, follow along the line and if you are commenting uh, my phone tends to be a little higher than my um, eye level, so I can't really see you, but I will answer any and all questions at the end of the uh, live lesson. So I'm going to go along. You could just scribble it along if you really can't see what's under there, but if you can, you can follow it more closely if you prefer.
and I'm really not one who has time for a lot of editing so I'm just going to let it run as we go here so um, you've got time to follow along you don't have to worry about me speeding it up or anything because that is just not my style what you see is what you get so feel free to turn the paper a different direction if you prefer, if you think your hand is going to follow better that way. And uh, just keep at it. It doesn't have to be exact, but just try to cover the lines that Right, this would have come up that way. And I'm just going to color in the thicker sections when I do it with the pens. So, um, yeah, that should be good. Hmm. So I'm going to switch to blue because I'm getting a little dull. And I want to keep it um, monoline for this one. Just follow all the lines as they come. When you're doing calligraphy, then there are basic strokes that you can follow so that it looks more um, consistent. Uh, and, and you can see those basic strokes in the faux calligraphy here. Uh, some of the letters are special letters, like S is its own curve, right? Um, but the letter E is more like the oval with a little extra center line, right? Um, and because this is bounce lettering, then the curves are a little less standardized. There's more motion to them. But if you take my um, calligraphy workshop or calligraphy course, you can learn what those basic strokes are so that your classy lettering will look really nice and consistent. So you'll see that there's this stroke here. The downstroke is thick and the upstroke is thin when you're writing with a brush pen. So the difference between what I'm doing right now and what I do in my workshops is the workshop will teach you the best way to use a flexible tip brush pen. Whereas the fun lessons that I do here on my YouTube channel or just live lessons, we're only using uh, any sort of tool with a rigid tip like the um, the bullet tip on the fabric marker so when we're doing it with that then we need to use faux calligraphy and that just basically means that you're putting the lines together yourself looking thick and thin not getting them with just one line out of the flexible tip tool I want to get this before I'm going to rub off all the 
other letters. There we go. And the last one here. Now, with the calligraphy, if you're going up, the line will be thin. And if you're going down, the line will be thick. Like, if I'm using a hard tool, then you can't really tell that, but with a flexible tool, it's really nice to only have to go over the lines just once, and the tool will make the thickness for you. So, anyway, there we've got our lines all set, and what we're going to do is, whoopsie, sorry, I'm going to kind of eyeball it here. And we'll put it right about, I like it a little higher, I think. So there we go. I'll set it here. That should be fairly straight. And if I only press it, it's not going to leave enough of a mark, I don't think. So, but let's check just in case. Ooh, almost. Can you see that there? Kind of. So what I could do is go over this one more time with a pencil or something. But let me see if I can do it enough. Because I went over the actual letters themselves instead of just scribbling with the chalk to begin with, um, I should be able to get a fairly good impression just by trying to rub it in, right? Let's see how this works. And then the chalk will come off of the fabric easily, but the fabric markers are permanent. You know what? Oh my goodness, I am just gonna go with that. I am not even gonna go over the with a pencil or anything. This will come off later. And I even wanted to show you, I finally found a beautiful black wing pencil. They say that you need to press less and it writes smoothly and oh my goodness, it is so true. But I'm not going to use a pencil today. I finally found it in Seoul last time I was there this past weekend. But let's just go ahead and ink this. So I'm going to start with the bullet tip and just follow along with the lines and then uh, I won't show you the ironing process but um, trust me it should work. I, I'm, I'm going to trust the pens that that does work. So obviously I was going rough with the lines so if you don't like how this looks then you've got to neaten up the curve as you go. So when I'm going down Actually, I'm not going to, just go the direction that feels most comfortable for you. And I actually like pressing outward. So it would be a down stroke, so I'm going to make it a little thicker. And then I'm going to come up around like this to make it look like a nice loop. And then here, and again, I'm going to Give it a loop like this and meet up like that. So if you practice the basic strokes um, with my workbook pages, then you'll end up with enough muscle memory that you're making nice curves without even thinking about them. Well, sometimes think about them a little, but anyways. And you want to taper in nicely here. So get a nice taper along the edges and try to have this center, this center section fairly uniform.
Your joining spot on your letters should be fairly similar across the whole piece and taper nicely. Keep your upstrokes very thin and your downstrokes thick. This ascending loop starts in the middle and comes up like this. And like I said, when I'm doing faux calligraphy, I like to move upward, but this would originally be a downstroke, right? And it would normally be straight in regular classy calligraphy style, but because it's bouncy calligraphy, I like to give it a bit more of a curve. And keep this motion going with a little more boing going straight up. Drawing on fabric is not easy. Please remember to stretch out your fingers. Give it a good shake. Make sure the blood is still running through them. And we're going to link this one here. style you do want to keep some uniformity with it like some of it will be bouncy here and there but these should be similar on top and then with this one I'm going to come down a little further down a little further so you ba standard baseline standard waistline but bouncing within that Come around here like this, give a nice loop, and taper so that you're coming in thin. Okay, so, oh, these are awfully close. So I'm going to color these eventually, so I'm just going to do this right now a little bit. I like to keep the R loop like half the width. to remove the pen from your hand when you're going to stretch your fingers. So I dip down for the T. 
And you don't want to bounce every letter. Some of them will be bouncy and some of them will be on the main line. Now, if you have really juicy fabric pens, um, maybe I should have mentioned this earlier, sorry, but I would recommend um, putting a sheet of paper behind them. So I know that mine really aren't that juicy, so I haven't done that. Um, perhaps when I'm ironing it, I will have a sheet of paper in between just in case, because I'm not sure what it'll do. Give it a round curve to finish. And then we've got Celebrate, oh yeah. Okay. One word down. Take a bit of a break. And I want to do small in black. Hope you're stretching your fingers because it can be hard on your hands, right? So we're going to do this one just mono line. A little curve and more stretchy, stretchy style. So go over it once or twice if you want to get it thick enough. Solid enough. And give a bit of room between your bouncing on this overturn. Go over it a couple of times. Celebrate, small, and just because I've gotten worried about this, let's see, we are fine on this edge. Good, good, good. So, just to be sure, yeah, it's, you can kind of see it in the middle of the bag. So, I'm going to take this sheet of paper, just in case. So, like I said, if your pens are juicier than mine, mm -hmm then do add something there to begin with. And then victories I'm going to do in purple, again with the fine tip pen.
So the main down stroke is about a quarter inch thick or half a centimeter or something. And these fancy bits are maybe half of that. Get a bit of a upstroke with this. So this is your main baseline and we can bounce below it from time to time. Gonna put that dot a little higher. And you can see that the joining spot is all very similar across the way. So when you're working with a brush pen, you should try to work to get this taper similar in appearance. You spin your marker every once in a while, give it a good quarter turn, because you don't want your tip of your pen to get fried on one side, and then you'll have trouble with it later. So again, I'm going to be coloring this in so it really doesn't matter how it's at. So and then when you color it in, you can really let the color come out from your marker. Get nice colors on that. There, solid. So if you like the look of calligraphy, please get in touch because I will be hosting another workshop that's coming soon.
so you'll have my email address from when you got the template here so if you're wondering when the next workshop will be please do just uh, send me a, a message and I can let you know Yeah, a bit of a ending piece there. And there we've got the main design. Okay, so it's just a matter of coloring it in now. So last time I did one of these bags, I did use the thick edge to color it in, but it's really kind of um, not as solid. You can see it does work. Maybe I will do it like that. But if you're not happy with the look of it, then give a try with the bullet tip. Or go over with the brush tip just for the main points and then go over it again with the bullet tip to get in all the crevices. Actually, I'm going to do the pink one first so that my arm is not all on top of it. I don't want to spread any color with the back of my hand if need, if, if that would happen. Now, normally I'm not a big fan of pink, but it's kind of been growing on me. With, with lettering, it just looks really nice. But... I don't know. I never thought I'd hear myself say that. But it does have its uses. It's bright and gives you some energy. I tend to go for like orange for energy more so. But this one, it just seemed to work really well with the purple. So I like this. And it's very celebratory, right? Purple is a nice color for victory. And pink is great for celebrating. Now I do see some other pink spots along here, but remember that chalk, it will wash off. And just be sure to iron beforehand. The one thing I like about faux calligraphy is that it is so versatile. You can put it anywhere. Uh, one of my other videos, I have it on a pot holder. The plants have been growing very nicely and um, I've got it on my classroom window here. Nice welcome sign for who any, for any parents that decide to drop by for a consultation. And even my students the uh, elementary students, they like to try and figure out what it says when I've written something with like cursive like calligraphy. So it's good for their skill building too. They love it when I write their name. Some of them like to try it to themselves as well. Okay, so that has the top of it. And let's try to get in all the nooks and crannies. You can scribble the way through. Look at that. It's much darker, isn't it? Make sure it's not popping up on my arm. I've been making a whole bunch of 
bookmarks today. So it's been a really busy day with making calligraphy items. So if you like to read, then making some nice paper bookmarks for you and your friends can be a really good way to use your calligraphy skills. And for those, I used uh, waterproof archival ink. So if there's like a cup of coffee nearby while you're reading your book, then you don't need to worry if it's iced coffee, if it'll sweat all over the place or what have you. Calligraphy is also really fun to use when you're decorating your date book or making name cards for somebody. So if you're going to have a fancy luncheon or something, then it's nice people know where, who they're sitting next to and where they're seated and lots of uses. Um, if you're wondering if calligraphy is the right thing to go with your on next occasion then give me a message and we'll see uh, maybe I can make some suggestions it's great for signage as well there that's much more colorful. So, and like I said, these extra bits will clean up in the wash. So, let's go along the way. Shake your hand out a bit again. Because it's, um, you gotta keep the blood flowing in there, right? Okay. I really like it when there's a big contrast between the thick strokes and the thin strokes like this. Okay, and one final overdoing with this, and then I think we're set. I wanted to come around this taper a little more there. So I think I colored this in already, or maybe not. So it takes a long time. I know if you have like a silhouette machine or a cricket machine, then you can put those decals on a lot faster, but um, I haven't got an iPad yet, so that's not quite possible to do like that. And, and I don't have a machine, but there's something nice about doing it by hand, right? 
I'm just taking the time to color. I mean, when somebody's not talking at you like me, or if I don't need to be talking at somebody, then um, it's really good. Like, you can just zone in and get in on coloring it the way you really want it, right? So, sorry for talking your ear off, but, but you know, if you have any questions about how to do it or what to do, then please ask me any time. And if you do get the project done, like, please take a picture and share it with me. Tag me at um, Lisa's Lovely Letters. You can email me at lovelylettering dot by Lisa at gmail Okay, there we go. We are set. And the other side is nice and neat. Let's see, did it go through at all? A little bit on that T, so it looks like it's a good thing I had this here. So, there we go. Celebrate small victories. And I do hope you remember all your accomplishments because it's really worthwhile to pat yourself on the back and give yourself that feeling of accomplishment. So that's all for today. We have accomplished this, and I look forward to seeing your projects. Bye-bye.